Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this image right here, because a paper out there is making a very bold claim suggesting that these are mushrooms. So in this video we're going to be talking about this paper right here and trying to find out if indeed there is any chance that what we're looking at here and what the NASA scientists have discovered over the past few years might be mushrooms after all. And also hopefully understand why a lot of scientists really don't think so. Now first of all, when it comes to life on Mars, there have been a lot of different propositions over the past few decades, almost like 50 years as a matter of fact. For example, a few years ago, I've discussed these unusual observations of fluctuations of methane in the atmosphere of Mars. Currently, it doesn't have a very good explanation. So this, to some of the scientists, suggests that there might be life on Mars after all. And it wasn't just methane. A lot of other organic compounds, including things like formaldehyde, have been discovered on Mars over the last few years. And even one of the chemical experiments from the Curiosity rover that you see landing on Mars right here has discovered unusual organic compounds when it essentially heated up a lot of the samples of the actual Martian soil while exploring the surface of Mars. And what a lot of those experiments have suggested is of course that maybe there is something inside Martian soil. But so far, at least as of today, there are also very likely inorganic explanations and potential chemical reactions that can explain all of this. So a lot of this is not super conclusive. Now one of the most famous examples of potential discovery of life that is still actually kind of seen as the best example is from the Viking 1 mission that back in the days, back in the 70s, performed a very interesting experiment on the surface of Mars, with the main purpose of course being discovering the potential life in the soil. This is known as the Viking Lander Biological Experiment, and it essentially did a very simple thing. It took a bunch of soil, then introduced various organic compounds into the soil, but all these organic compounds were mixed with the radioactive isotopes, for example carbon-14, whose purpose was to serve as a kind of a um, signal if something, for example, is using those organic compounds. So, for example, if there is a bunch of bacteria in those samples, they're going to be taking up all of these uh, radioactive isotopes of carbon, and they're going to be using them, and all of this should be detected in various metabolites produced by the bacteria. And so this experiment essentially was just looking for this increase of overall ratio of radioactive compounds in a certain sample. And it seems that the first few experiments did actually detect this. But then when trying this with another sample that was previously heated to like 160 degrees Celsius, nothing was detected in those particular samples. And so in that sense, the discovery was very interesting. But unfortunately, some of the follow-up missions did not return similar results, so it wasn't really that conclusive. Nevertheless, these early results from the Viking probe definitely gave scientists a lot to think about. But by far the most famous example of the potential discovery of life on Mars was this right here. Something that kind of resembles life, and was coming from an asteroid found here on Earth. And this was such a big discovery back in the days that it was even announced by President Clinton as the official discovery of life on another planet. But years later we discovered that, well, this wasn't true at all. As a matter of fact, these particular things were recreated in the lab using a simple chemical reaction. And this is actually the important lesson for what I'm about to tell you about this particular study. After this, the scientists came to a very important conclusion. Morphology does not equal life. Or in other words, if something looks like life, like if this looks like a bacteria, it doesn't actually mean that it's life. So unless it actually starts moving around and reproducing, it's definitely not life. But what about this paper? So a lot of the imagery that they use here is official NASA imagery. It's from NASA's Opportunity, Curiosity rovers, it's also from the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and a lot of this has already been previously reported on and analyzed by various scientists. But this particular team of scientists uh, focus specifically on this, these unusual circular observations. NASA usually refers to these as blueberries, mostly because one of the previous images that was color corrected presented them as these blue tiny spherical shapes. They did resemble blueberries to some extent, but obviously this was just a nickname. Most scientists were pretty clear that these were rocks, and specifically these were a type of a hematite. Now on Earth, hematite generally looks like this. It's essentially an iron oxide compound that is usually associated with the formation in water and also with a lot of oxidation and weathering. But on Mars, it does seem to come as these very unusual spherical shapes. And to a lot of NASA scientists, this essentially meant a sign that Mars was covered in water. Although somewhat similar formations have been actually found here on planet Earth as well in at least two places, both of them being deserts. One in Gobi in China, and one being this place right here in Utah that's known as the Jurassic Navajo Sandstone Formation. 
with a general explanation involving acidic water and a lot of iron and calcium deposited in the early soil. So in other words, there is at least one chemical explanation that seems to make sense, with one major difference though. The Martian spherules seem to be a lot more spherical compared to the ones on Earth. And so naturally these are extremely curious objects. So curious as a matter of fact that a lot of scientists don't even know if this is truly hematite or something entirely different. Let's go back to the study in question. So, in their paper, the scientists took a look at these two pictures taken roughly around three days apart. And they noticed that, well, something seems to be off here. The pictures have changed with some of these spherules appearing even though they were absent three days ago. And also showing some of the other less defined pictures where these same spherules seem to have disappeared after about two or three days. Now there are a few of these pictures in the paper showing the before and after and pretty much most of them make the same point. The point being that essentially these are maybe living objects. The objects being fungi or mushrooms. And the paper tries to make a lot of evidence through the analysis with the terrestrial mushrooms, which are these things on the left, and then comparing them to what we see in the Martian pictures. And for the most part they do seem to resemble what's known as puffballs even going as far as showing us the puffballs that do tend to shred their skin once in a while. Now we know that puffballs on Earth tend to shed this crustos as it's known, and it's generally one of the more defining features of these types of mushrooms. But the question here is of course, is that what we're seeing in this Martian picture? Is this actually crustos as well? And if so, are these actually mushrooms growing on Mars? going so far as to even suggest that they're visible from the orbit of Mars. This was taken by the Martian orbiter, meaning that these objects would be relatively large in size. Well, okay, so now let's get a little bit more realistic. Once again, just like with this thing right here from ALH 84001, this is just a morphology. It basically sort of looks like something we have here on the planet, but other than the visual resemblance, and also the appearance of these objects right here after three days, there is very little to suggest that this is indeed mushrooms. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's not, I would love to believe that it is, but we have to exercise caution here and we also have to be a little bit skeptical. The first question we should be asking is of course, can this be explained in some other natural way? And I think there are many ways of explaining this. These objects right here could have been covered by all of the dust and all of the sand on Mars and simply uncovered over a period of three days. There is really nothing to suggest in these images that these are mushrooms growing from within the soil. Now is this some sort of a crustose crust that's covering these potential mushrooms? Well I guess it could be, but it can also be just the weathering effects from various compounds present in these rocks. And though it is possible that as researchers claim, these objects do seem to possibly change in size appear and disappear after a few days, the more likely explanation here is not that these are mushrooms, but that it's actually the result of Martian weather, with these objects being covered, uncovered, and even being moved around the Martian surface by things like, for example, Martian storms. And although the scientists in the paper do claim that after about four days a typical mushroom on Earth grows to about this size as well, in this case we don't really see all of these so-called mushrooms transform. For example, this little guy right here doesn't seem to change as much, and this one right here seems to just be really covered by something. So once again, this is just morphology. Something looks like something else. But the more important question here, or the more important way of thinking about this is to ask yourself, can we find something like this on our planet? If we can actually identify a rock that pretty much resembles this, it would just mean that Mars overall had very different geological formations and possibly conditions compared to planet Earth. Today we think Mars was very similar in uh, climate to what you would expect in a place like Iceland. It was very dry, it was very desert-like, and it also had somewhat cold conditions, but was warm enough to maintain liquid water in some parts. And so maybe we could find something like this in some of the more colder deserts on the planet, such as the ones I previously mentioned. Now I couldn't find the pictures from uh, China from Gobi Desert, but I found some from Utah, from University of Utah, taken by Marjorie Chan, one of the researchers. And look at that, it somewhat resembles those blueberries as well. As a matter of fact, morphologically speaking, it's almost identical to what we seem to be observing on Mars and to what the scientists are talking about in their paper, but using mushrooms as an explanation. Now we know that this is not a mushroom. 
And we even have a very good explanation for how this forms uh, using calcium, iron, and acidic water. We even know what they sort of look like on the inside. And these are known as Mokui marbles. Something that was geologically created in the somewhat dry, somewhat cold deserts of Utah with the presence of a lot of acidic water in the past. So if we can explain the formations that we're seeing on Mars by analyzing the ones on Earth, can we still make a strong argument that these are mushrooms? In my opinion, the answer is no. But I'm also very skeptical, and I generally tend to go with the whole extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence motto that I usually follow in most of the videos. And so even though I'm not saying this is not mushrooms, it's probably not mushrooms. And then, having done a little bit more digging, I discovered that apparently this paper was officially removed from one of the other magazines a couple of years ago. So this is a republication of the same idea, but in a different journal. But that's beside the point. The point here is that I don't think this is mushrooms. Most scientists don't really think this is mushrooms. And we know that these things on Earth are also not mushrooms. We kind of opened them up and there was nothing mushroomy on the inside. But some of them could be formed in a different way. A way that we know things that are spherical form on Earth as well. Which actually would also explain this picture right here. At least one other paper claims that these could be just signs of various meteorite collisions on the planet. And since we know that the Martian surface is covered with signs of various meteorite collisions over the last few billion years, it shouldn't really come as a surprise that some of these formations, some of these spherical rocks, are actually formed by various small meteorites falling onto the planet and creating these spherical formations just like they do on planet Earth, making it look like they came out of nowhere. Which of course is another possible reasonable explanation that does not currently involve any mushrooms on Mars. But here's the thing though, to be honest, I would love to believe that these are mushrooms. As a matter of fact, I personally do believe that there is going to be a discovery of some sort of life, either bacterial or fungal life. But I definitely do not believe that this, this, or this right here is proof enough to suggest that what we're looking at are mushrooms. Morphology, as we've learned from the previous announcement from basically over two decades ago, does not mean life. If we can simulate and create something similar on planet Earth, it definitely means that this is geological in nature. And to me, this right here is enough proof. But nevertheless, I'm still looking forward to some of the future announcements coming from either Perseverance mission or maybe even the Chinese rover that's going to be landing sometime soon that maybe we did discover some kind of a biological activity on the surface. And so on that note, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. Check out all of the relevant links and data in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful t-shirt that now features a really awesome Mars design that does help support the channel quite a lot. But either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.